¿Qué pasa, campeones? And welcome to a churros episode. Back with your weekly doses of Barça glory in Madrid. Sorry. <laughs> Get it? That's sort of sorry, maybe with a Canadian accent. <laughs> I don't know. It is Monday, the 6th of Feb. Kian and I are back to do what we do, and that is debate the weekend action, what took place in the last match day, in this case, in La Liga Santander, match day 20, the first match of the second half of the season. It's underway, Kian. Crunch time it is. And the gap keeps opening. What was once five now is eight points that is barça being eight points clear at the top of the league standings madrid dropping points surprisingly maybe not over in some wish against a feisty mallorca what a spectacle that one was and then to close off match day 20 in the spotify come no it was barça who hosted sevilla an injured andalusian side it is always still dangerous for players they have, Kian. It's crazy to see where they are in the standings with the coach that they have. Make what you will of San Pauli. Um, he did some excellent work. He has an interesting or good track record, I would say. I'm excited to see Brian Hill back in La Liga. I'm back on a side like Sevilla. Um, but needless to say, un, 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 uh, Una victoria placida, as they say, and, and a placid victory. Is placid, is placida translate into placid? Can you say that in English or making things up again? Uh, placid? No, it sounds that it sounds very wrong. I, I don't Actually, really, that's not I don't word. really know. I've never heard it in this contest, but that, that doesn't mean it won't work, I guess. What are we doing? Yeah. We're talking well, about the word placid when. Barcelona just won the league yesterday. Should be talking about different things. I want to congratulate hey. you on the on another league okay. title for Barcelona. How many of you guys got now in the in the cabinet? That'll be number twenty five. Is it? Wow, twenty five. I think that yeah. qualifies think you as like off. almost a big club now. That's pretty impressive. I th- Getting up there. I think we're six off Real Madrid. So I know you're feeling the heat, my friend. You know you're feeling, you know you're feeling us coming. We're breathing down your necks if we haven't overtaken you already, to be well, really honest. But yeah, well, that part maybe in maybe in ten years, if if you if you keep going with if Chavi keeps going. Sorry, twenty six league titles. So that would be our twenty seventh. Got it. Well, congratulations, regardless, man. Um, Thank you. I saw some people. I don't know where I saw this or where I heard it or read it, I don't know. Idea that Sevilla were had to like, you know, we're, we're giving Barcelona some problems or something. Sevilla weren't coming close mm. to you guys in that game. So mm. your defense continues to be incredible. Yeah. Then that to me is still the most, that's the biggest story. It's great that you guys are also scoring goals. Don't get me wrong. Uh, Clearly, things are happening offensively, but the defense has been, been the biggest story, man. No team apart from yep. Bayern and Inter and Real Madrid once has been able to really take advantage of you guys defensively. And now that Araujo is back, Christensen's way better than I thought he was going to be at Barca. I got to admit to yeah. that as well. He's been great. Yeah, he surprised the many. Yeah. Yeah, it was. You know, I, I'll never forget in the beginning, it was... Um, sort of leaked in the Madrid press at this uh, football, this big football scout. Again, this was with uh, unnamed sources being leaked through Marca, I believe it was, and then it got to us. But basically saying, you know, between Rudiger and Christensen, and Christensen, Madrid picked up, picked up the good central defender. And with... I'll just speak for me personally, without having what seen much of, of Andreas Christensen and sort of with, that's where you see you should never judge a book by its cover, right? Because um, uh, upon meeting the man himself as well, and he was very, you know, his, his, his 
an introvert, I think you could say. He's a soft-spoken, soft-spoken, excuse me, gentleman. Um, you do sort of like, I mean, I think, I mean, can you say doubts? What's another word for doubt? What's a good synonym? It's not that doubts creep in, but you're like, okay, well, let's see where this one goes, right? Uh, uh, let's say his, his, his business card upon presenting himself at the doorstep of Can Barça uh, with what was being said at the time about him, like I said, the, the, that leaked source that I was just referring to, and then meeting him himself and, 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 and him, him coming across in a more gentle way, softer way. Uh, I am very pleasantly surprised. I, I think we need to give massive credit, Kian, as well, for the fact that, you know, before a few months ago, Andreas Christensen, Ronald Araujo, and Jules Kunde had never even played together. Like, this is the first time that these three are playing together in a team uh, under very extreme difficult circumstances as well, with extreme pressure. And along with Alejandro Balde and Jordi Busquets performing not just admirably, phenomenally, but record-breakingly. Uh, this is, you know, it, it's numbers that uh, are for the books. And so far, as you rightly mentioned, Kian, the best that we're seeing uh, anywhere. I think the Christensen, Christensen thing, I mean, the assessment of what you heard about Rudiger, Christensen, and Ram getting the better one, I don't think that was necessarily wrong because certainly at the time, Rudiger was one of the best center backs in the world. And, and Real Madrid were getting for free. Obviously, there was some signing fees and the salary and stuff. I, I don't think that was a wrong take or a hot take to to claim that Rudiger was the better pairing. Keep in mind also, we had just seen a scenario where in the Champions League, Real Madrid went to Stamford Bridge. And... Mm. I was there. I'll never forget it because I was literally like on almost on, on the pitch. I was so close that Vinicius was cooking Christensen so badly on that right wing that Tuchel actually subbed him at halftime and was yelling at him. But he was playing he was playing out of position then though, if he was in the right wing position. He was playing right back. Yeah. Hmm. He was playing right back that game. He was subbed at half, and Chelsea were much better in the second half when, when that sub was made. So I, I said right wing. Obviously, I mean right back. Yeah, right back, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, and and then, you know, so that's also part of the, the reason why myself included and, and other Madridis has really made fun of the signing. But also, even making fun of it, it was a half joke because I didn't expect Christensen to be like a key player. I just expected hey, it's a good signing because you get some depth mm. in the defensive line. Why not? Yeah, but it turns yeah. out he's playing actually a more important role than just like a, a depth piece that comes in here and there. He's actually been really good, and I think fit really matters. Fit matters because he's really good on the ball, and that's half the battle at Barcelona if you're playing a defensive line, a high defensive line, being able to progress the ball, and he can do that really well. I'm, yeah. I'm not. I think he has maybe yeah. other weaknesses, and, and certain teams can exploit them, maybe. But right now at Barca, the fit is really good. And obviously when you put him alongside people like Araujo and Kunde, it can mask some other things. So you have the org the organization and the defensive side, I think down for, for a large uh, part of, of what Xavi is trying to do with the system. I also want to say something else about Barca and Xavi. One of the things I was skeptical of Xavi, and you can go back, I, I just by accident, I came across one of my old tweets from 2018. I think it was 2018 when Chavi's quotes from Al Sad were surfacing. I think he was at Al Sad at that time. Was it Al Sad that mm -hmm. he was coaching, or was it a different Al Sad? Al Sad was Al Sad. Al Sad. And he was talking about some things. I don't remember what the text, the context was, but people were making fun of him, like, "Oh, I can't wait till Chavi goes to Barcelona and just ruins them. He has no idea what he's doing as a coach." You can go back, read the receipts. I was like one of the guys who actually defended him. I said, no, this guy's pretty smart. He's going to be good. You can make fun of him and, and be annoyed by him. Fine. But I think he's a really intelligent guy. I don't know if he's going to be successful or not. I said that. Um, mm. But one of the things I was really skeptical about, because based on a lot of the stuff he would say publicly, things like, if things aren't working, 
you don't change the system, you change the players. The system's not the problem, the players are. I, w- I was skeptical about some of that stuff, of not having plan B, of, you know, if you're if what you're doing is not working, do you have a plan B, etc. A lot of the stuff, I think the skepticism was true based on what we saw in the Champions League last season and this season. But I also do think he has come up with different things. You know, he's deviated from the 4-3-3 a little bit. The it's a it's not a traditional 4-3-3 like the one he's playing right now, for example, because he has four central midfielders. And the guy who yeah. goes up on the left wing now, it can be on any different any, any given sequence, it could be Gavi, it could be Pedri, and it could be um Frankie Dion. And it works. It's it gives gives them that ability to control and create those passing triangles in midfield while being able to send any one of those three up the field onto the left wing. And I think it works. Chavi said that they found Frankie's best position. I think this is they really have gotten the best out of Frankie in this role. I definitely think that. Yeah. I wonder now with Busquets injured, what that means. Do they put Frankie mm. back at the six? I'm curious. I don't know what you think what is going to happen. Mm. Is it going to be more Kessier? Mm. I don't know. Well, actually, what is what do you think will happen in that situation? Could... It's it's a it's an interesting one. Um, I think Chavi has a difficult choice to make as a matter of fact because uh, I think he's clearly been very comfortable with the uh, four midfielders and um he's now then at a point to say okay do I put do I pair Frankie with Kessier who I think actually Kessier surprised many of us at how well he performed in the role that he did and 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 how well he connected with the players how well well his production how good his production is offensively as well and i say surprised because had i had i or or others watched more games of his at ace milan i think we would have not been surprised and sooner realized he's actually perfectly capable of of fulfilling that and i say this because of you know afterwards i was watching the uh resume the the weekly wrap up in la liga where the panelists were discussing and showing images of of Kessier and Milan. So I think right now, if you're Xavi, that would be your number one option, right? Um, why fix anything that isn't broken? Uh, and if you have a substitute, albeit it not be a natural substitute for Busquets and Kessier, and seeing how well it went yesterday, um, you know, you have to do that. Uh, Busquets was out, you know, after three minutes of, of, of game time. He left the game very early. So it was the entire game, in fact, that guess he had to uh, play in that position alongside of, of Frank. And although the goals didn't come until the second half uh, and the team sort of had to, you know, find their way, um, although, you know, deservedly get, getting the lead as well. I mean, in the first half, Barca had, had several very good chances. It's, it's crazy that Lewandowski is actually one of the uh, players that didn't score uh, one of the three goals yesterday. Um, but, um, you know, I think maybe you do go for that. Is that a blow to, you know, an Ansu or a Ferran? Probably, surely, yeah. You know, because right now, there's no doubt about it anymore. Rafinha has proven his case. He is well. the number two or n- number three option. Yeah, absolutely. With Dembele out as well, Xavi will use for sure Lewandowski and, and Rafinha as his one and, his one-two punch. Um, and like you said, he's, he's done ever so well. I mean, yesterday was probably his most complete game in a Barca shirt where uh, his production was just was awesome it was everything you would want it to be um and slowly but surely he's he's picking up the numbers as well you know it's now eight assists he's the team top assist provider uh leapfrogging Dembele uh, with eight and scoring six six goals as well um he had more chances to score yesterday so yeah he's definitely coming into his own and uh, uh, Xavi is prizing him with, with you know, the con- giving him confidence, giving him minutes, where an Ansu and, and, and a Ferran are now clearly, you know, the third or fourth options um, in the absence, of course, of Dembele, where then, you know, it, it would be uh, 
you know, it, we'll, we'll see. We'll see then. I mean, clearly, when Dembélé returns, I think uh, we will see Lewandowski and Dembélé continue to be his number one and two choices. And then the question once again becomes: Okay, is it Rafinha? I would say so, or is it four midfielders in in Gavi, Pedri, Frankie, and uh, Busquets slash slash Kessie? Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know uh, what 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 would you do or what would you prefer? Uh, what do you think? Well, it's just interesting because I wonder how permanent it is. Because when Dembele right. comes back, mm. um, it, it, and also I, I suppose like how much does it change how Xavi wants to build his squad for the future? Future, maybe that seems like a dr- dramatic conversation to have and, and a dramatic question to ask because you know we've seen it for a few games and it's worked really well. But if this. Mm. But I, I think what's interesting about it is that it, I think it's evolved a little bit because we saw it against Atletico and it worked really well for the first 20 minutes. Uh, I think since then, it's actually gaining momentum and maybe it's it has yeah. to do with familiarity. They're getting used to how mm-hmm. it works. And so they're getting better at doing that instead of it, you know, maybe only working one time and never working again. I think it actually may actually work more depending on how this yeah. goes. And so does that... because. Previously, Xavi really wanted runners and cutters. So that's why there was a a big, big investment in Rafinha and Ferran and uh, I don't know. I'm sure maybe there's players I'm forgetting, but and those investments were made at a time when when you already had Ansu and you already had Dembele. Well, there was Adama, of course, that was there that that left. Right. Uh, yeah. Mm. So does does Chavi maybe Memphis, not need to well, Memphis? Does well Memphis was already yeah. When so there was a lot of there was a lot of wingers who could do certain things in which mainly included running. Does Chavi now maybe look at that and say maybe I don't need these guys as much in the future or maybe we don't need to prioritize these guys? Maybe we need to prioritize more midfielders if we're going to play this way. I'm just curious to see. It's you know again maybe it's just a dramatic conversation to have right now because we don't know much about it, but. But I, I'm curious to see how it. I mean, maybe I still changes. think he what he wants from his wingers to exploit the space and to make the field as wide as possible. You know, we saw these long passes from Kunde and Frankie as well end up at, at Rafinha. You know, him exploiting them that space to then cut in and either pass it or take a shot himself to incoming traffic in, in Lewandowski and, and Gavi, of course, as well. Um, by the way, six looking pretty good on Gavi, huh? This was his first shirt game rather with uh six on his shirt it seems that la liga has lost the battle i don't know Knock on yeah I, I i'm i think it's it. it's finalized now because my dad was asking me about this i was uh hanging out with him yesterday and he was like so what's going on with this gabby thing and i said i think i think barca can just it's fine like it's they, they're not they're, for, they're for the time being at least like that's okay. why i said knock on wood there's no way incoming drama but uh yeah um so man it's 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 looking really good and and uh i'm liking this team it's it, we had a little dip right we had after the clasico in the super cup there was a little dip and leading into the clasico it was that as well you know there were the, the team was 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 getting by with one goal to nil victories and uh, emphasis was being placed on on the defense and making sure not to concede, perhaps a little bit more of a pragmatic Chavi we were seeing as he was figuring out whether it's four fielders and who his wingers are to exploit and white the space and widen it and, and, and widen the pitch, etc. But right now it's it's uh, you know w- the game against Betis now this one again against Sevilla um, and say what you want about the opponents. You know, in the case of the Betis, you're still talking about a very high quality side. The win against Real Sociedad as well. Um, it's it it's a good moment. It's it's uh, we're, we're we're getting certainly a version of this team that I think everybody and Xavi, including obviously, are very happy with. Um, but there's still such a, a long way to go. There's no doubt about it. I mean. Last week we were talking about five points being nothing, and although eight is a, a nicer, fluffier cushion, um, crunch time is still you know yet to hit. We talked about the schedule 
last week, I think it was, Kian, where you were listing the games, the Villarreal's, the Manchester United's, et cetera, that's still games that are tough games that have to be played. There's a marathon of Clásicos coming. Um, trophies aren't won yet, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And and uh, I'm very, but I will say this, I'm, I'm feeling better about our chances and fin finishing off the season with more silverware as opposed to seeing uh, kind of this deflation happen that we saw last season with this team. Yes. Well, the uh, the thing is, you mentioned the run, and and also like I think it's important to note that you guys were winning when you weren't playing well. I think that really matters. It matters now, right now, especially because you may not need to be playing perfectly for the rest of the year. And I know it. That yeah. sounds kind of like a a dangerous thing to do and obviously i wouldn't advocate for that if you're a barca fan like just Child, let's just play bad and drop results that's obviously not what i'm saying but what i am saying is that mathematically it's going to be really hard to, for real madrid to catch up to you guys now and hmm. it's funny the difference between five and eight is only three points but it's a lot eight points is a lot at this stage of the season it'd be different if this was october but it this stage of the season you know, you're going into this really heavy schedule with the eight point cushion. You you got to be pretty thankful for that. Um, it's going to be hard to let. It's that never slip. been done before statistically. That, well, it's that's never exactly been done why I'm pessimistic right. about it. Yeah, that's that's exactly right, why right. I think it matters. So when I'm congratulating yeah. you on the league, that's not even banter. I, I really think it's going to be hard to catch up. I genuinely believe that this league is pretty much over. Um, so how how does it, it, you know what's funny? I don't know if you saw these go around, but there were there are these memes, are not really memes, but these video clips rather of the Bernabeu, this girl in the Bernabeu with a Ma Madrid shirt, and Thomas Roncero, who you know of course, and I'm sure many of our listeners do as well, in this sort of open spaced. Like it, it, they were holding uh, El Chiringuito in front of a live audience in, in Zaragoza somewhere. And uh, in both the videos, you know, they start, chant start chanting, Chavi, quédate, Chavi, quédate, Chavi, quédate. Uh, a famous, you know, tune that, that has had different variants, of course. But it's uh, funny how, you know, History comes back to bite you in the ass because, oh, and, and the reason I bring it up is you mentioned you were one of those that hailed Xavi or, or at least said that, 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 you know, he's a, he, he could be a good coach or that he has promising characteristics and traits that, that could potentially turn him into a good coach. Were you at some point happy with, Xavi, you know, having come to Barca, did you sort of uh, sign on to this Xavi Quedate narrative of, of jokingly saying that Xavi needs to stay because we were worse off with him and he was going to run us into the ground? Or what, were you cautiously, up, cautiously optimistic? <laughs> no, I think it was more I was just agnostic about it. I was in the unknown. I, was, I just didn't mm. want to judge either way. If he's... He could be... Zinedine Zidane, or he could be um, Frank Lampard, for all I know. I just I just feel like it's fair to just wait and see what the answer is. I don't know, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think it turns out up until now he's he's good. But, you know, as, as you just said, things can change quickly. Um, yeah. So, you know, one coach who is the next coming one year could be a disaster the next year and vice versa. So... Maybe that will also come back to bite, <laughs> to bite. I don't know. But right now, it's hard to argue I mean, look, with the results. Yeah. there Obviously, there is a point in time where Xavi will either walk away or be forced away from his job as coach at Barca. Will it be after having won a record amount of trophies or no trophies at all? Of Obviously, that, that remains to be seen. Uh, the, the thing is, uh, I guess also what I'm trying to say or what I was watching what I was thinking rather when I was watching, you know, the, the Bernabeu chant Xavi Quedate or this this ginormous theater in, in, in this Chiringuito. Which one when was that? Was that the last Clásico? The league one? I guess. I suppose so, yeah. yeah. A few months ago, right? That. Yes. The 3-1? 
The three one. It, it must. Have, it, it, it didn't have any further context. It was just this girl with the Madridista uh, Madrid shirt and and you know her boyfriend next to her, and she was just showing everybody going Javi quédate, Javi quédate, and laughing her asses off and stuff. Um, what, I will say this: what, if what Real Madrid somehow come back and win the league, and Barca just shit their their pants, that's that's going to be a fun one to revisit too. But that's not going to happen. But it's just. I I got I gotta say what. Well, sorry, go ahead. No, I, I the the only thing that that struck me was even during those times, when it was you know during the Bayern on slaughter that that Xavi witnessed as well. Of course, the Champions League exits, the the loss in the Bernabeu and the Clasico and all that. I think me for one, but many others, we continue to believe in Xavi believe in the project and that's something that was or has been very different from say uh what we had with the ronald kuman project where it was more like shit you know things aren't going that well and we're not really improving and uh yes you know we still of course won the copa de rey with him um but i think that was more tirando de talento right like depending on the talent, the individual talent that the team had. Mind you, Messi, of course, was still there as well. Um, but, but, you know, but in the losses, it, it, there were a lot of doubts surrounding that previous project, the project, whereas like with Xavi, those doubts really weren't, weren't there. Like it was more like, no, no, like we believe in what is what he is doing. And of course, I'm not saying that we were unanimously all hand in hand kumbaya behind Xavi. I think the, the majority of us, but there don't get it twisted. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of criticism that Xavi has to put up with from the local press or local journalists or local fans as well. Um, and, 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 and so that there is a divide, you know, there's a divided opinion uh, and there has been with regarding to Xavi. So maybe I should just keep it to myself and say, I, I continue to believe in, in that, 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 that project, even during the losses and the tough times. I also have to say that from a, a pure likability standpoint, which is a different subject altogether because we're talking about um, tactical acumen and, and, and also just the efficiency, he's hasn't been as annoying as I, as I kind of hoped he would be. <laughs> you know what I mean? Remember, because there was all the quotes about complaining you, uh, about this grass and... I yeah, yeah I just like which, which Angelotti did as well in in the Copa right so the exact same thing yeah yeah nah it's a bit different that pitch really was bad <laughs> no 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 yeah, Chavi, no no, no, no grass no no grass length no, grass no. length and water on that's that that's a different that's a different complaint but anyways neither here nor there um a couple of days ago he had a nice quote about Vinicius where he said referees must protect players like him. And it's normal because he's so good at one versus one duels that people have to stop him with physical abuse. Um, yesterday, he was asked about the league being over and he said, no, I've many times as a player, I know what it's like for Real Madrid to come back and beat me. And I don't want that to happen to me as a coach. Of course. I just wish, like, give us a jab, man. Give us something. Just give us, like... Give us. He's a, not going to do it when he lifts. When he lifts the trophy, he'll do just, it. I just give us. Give us a a a, a curse. Give, a, give us a curse word that I can't say on the podcast. Go say something. Say something to fuel the fire. He'll do something. He he'll say something that either will get taken out of context, or he will take a little jab if need be. Like let's say next season. Give us an eto. I mean. Ato or PK level something, you know. Rekindle the, the hostility. You you want us to get better ratings and us to be more hostile. And I miss the Mourinho versus, versus Pep era. I miss it. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. It was like, man, the whole world was watching those classicals. Admittedly, it was more about probably because Cristiano and Messi and those two teams were really, really good, more so than Mourinho and Pep. But we, man, we will never forget that era. I mean, I don't. No, it was fantastic. Yeah, it was fun. Anyways. There's a great documentary. Um, you should try to get your hands on it. It's 
I don't think it is um, available probably in your territory because it's a, it's like a local production, but it's basically just uh, goes through that entire month or what is it? It's like 16 days or 18 days where these four classicos are played. Uh, and yeah, just rehashing a lot of the, <laughs> the beef yeah, and the frustrations that were lingering during those days and talking to, to uh, everyone about it. But yeah, when you come over, I'll tell you what, we'll sit down and watch it on my couch when you come over to watch the, the Classico. Let's cool, let's do it. We'll do a live reaction. Uh, I think the April Camp No one I'll, I'll be at. I don't know about or the April, March one. Sorry. Yeah, April yeah. 5th, that one I think, I think I'll be at. So, dude, I've got some questions for you, unless you uh, want Ask to... Ask away. No, just uh, what's going on? What's How are you seeing the rest? I mean, you, you're giving up the league, so the Copa and Champions League are left. Nothing to snuff at, sniff at, scuff at? Nothing to... Nothing, nothing to be placid about. Nothing bang, bang. to be placid about. Um, how how do you like? How are things at the moment? How do you see it pan out? How are things evolving? It's. I mean, this is is this the lowest point for Real Madrid since uh, since quite a while? I mean, since since quite a while, things are things have been very good for Real Madrid. Still, you know, current champions of the. Champions League, La Liga. So this is this is a new low, I would say. That's an interesting question. Uh, I I think it's the lowest point in the league specifically for a long time. Last season, I really felt rock. I feel like the team was in a really brutal state after the PSG first leg, where it was just so clear from a talent and youth and energy and tactical standard we were so light years behind psg in that game mm. then of course the next the second leg somehow it was just absolutely crazy and it just got crazier but i, I feel like that moment i remember it being pretty low the difference between that and this is that you can recover from losing one nothing in the first leg by and being terrible you can't really recover from an eight point deficit in the league you know and so that that is that's the main the the, the point of recovery is more difficult now right. and also health is deteriorating in the squad mm. Mm. the lack of depth the lack of options the fact that Benzema is just not available at all this year and when he is he's 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 not the Benzema of last year has there do you think that now i know this is bringing up an old debate because i feel like people have been trying to write off benzema for so many years uh i'll never forget when i heard i was in a bar uh watching the classico and with madridistas mind you around around me and it was precisely this girl again a girl with a very shrill voice going, Benzenada, Benzenada. <laughs> and this was like years ago, Benzenada. I was like, and I'm listening to like watching her scream to the to the TV going, my God, get a life. But uh, also Shut thinking, up. you were like, definitely what? joining her. Yeah, Benzenada. There's definitely some video footage somewhere of you <laughs> pretending like you didn't get in on that action. <laughs> I was like, hey, this is a good one. I'll bring this Great up. On the pod. Let me take some notes. Benzenada. <laughs> Oh. It was generally her, she was off putting by how she was screaming. Um, I was so off put that I never brought it up on a pod. But anyway, long story short, he obviously stayed. Florentino believed in him, and, and rightfully so. And he turned, and he's turned out to and Zizou, and he's turned out to be uh, you know a fantastic football player, the winner of the Ballon d'Oro, etc. Rightfully deserved and everything. But do you think that now? that he has those accolades individually and collectively uh, he's, he's peaked. Are we now just in, in just decline Benzie mode from here on in? Should Madrid uh, sell him? 
Well, they're not going to they sell them at last summer. No, no, I, you can't. You can't sell a player like that who's 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 deservedly winning the Ballon d'Or and had an unbelievable year, one of the best in Real Madrid history. You yeah. can't. You can't, and you no. shouldn't. And and I know. And also, I don't. I don't think he's finished at all. I I think he has some good football left in him, including this season and next. I think maybe put a two year timeline on it. But I think it's safe to say that his peak is over because mm. that's just if you look at the, the numbers, the stats, the age, the fact that he had, you know, everything. It, it's hard to replicate what he's done in the past two years. It's hard to sustain what he did. But I don't think that means he's finished. I just think that he, it's a different version of him that can still be very, very helpful and contribute a lot. But I think it's safe to say that his peak is over. Um, yeah, that that that's not a hot take. I don't think that's not a hot take. No, but you you would keep him on. I mean, what what are you doing with Benzema? What what do, what do you do if you're Benzema? If do you stay there and and I think he stays until his contract is over 2024. Mm. The main problem that the club has put themselves into and cornered themselves into is that they don't know how to transition this properly. You have two years of Benzema. Okay, fine. Hope that he stays healthy and provides good value. Safe to assume he can't play every game. Safe to say he's going to go through injuries. And what the plan is to wait till Endrick to come over in two years. So you're going to, you're going to wait until then and not sign anyone and then hope that Endrick is the superstar. Tough, tough place to be in, in terms of squad building. So it's a, uh it's it's a risky situation they put themselves into the poster boy of the team of the club the fran the franchise player is vinny are you asking me a question right now <laughs> i just want your opinion on that Well, I don't. I don't know what the question is. I mean, we we talked we talked about it. I think it was last week. Might have been the, the the one prior to that. The Vinny saga continues. Madrid have put out one statement in defense of who I at least, or I think Madridistas would would deem their star player, their franchise player. Should they back him more? Are they not backing him more because he's not their number one guy? I mean, I'm just thinking out loud here. Would they consider a trade to apply basketball language for Mbappé, a Vinny Mbappé trade transfer? Listen, Vinicius is not some going thoughts. anywhere. Just some but, thoughts I'm throwing yeah. out there. Okay. Sorry. If Vinicius yeah. leaves, I don't think it has anything to do. And this is not even a conversation, but just if, in theory. If Vinicius leaves, it won't have to do with Real Madrid. It will have to do with him being like, you know what? I'm done with Spain. There's like all these, all these little statements from La Liga. We're going to look into the racism and no action. I'm done. I'm done. Premier League, they'll take more action. They'll snip in the butt, whatever. I think it'll be come down to him getting fed up with 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 what's happening in La Liga and the abuse he's getting. It won't be for Real Madrid trading him or pushing him out. Um, should the club back him more? I think there's two different conversations and two different topics that I think often get convoluted and mixed up by fans. One is should Real Madrid back him more and 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 defend him more publicly, especially in the face of racism. Yes. Should the club, uh, or sorry, uh, should the club, that's what you were asking, right? But in terms of like what, what was happening yeah. on the field yesterday, there was racism involved, of course, but th that was coming from the stands monkey chance. Uh, what the club has to do 
is decrease the dependency on him. You can't just expect him to just carry your entire team, giving him the ball every single possession and letting him cook four defenders. It's not a sustainable model for it. It's not how you play football. I understand you want to use your stars to your best capacity, but you can't just every single play, the entire stadium, everyone's fan and their moms and their dogs at home know that, oh, the ball's going to Mbappe. Everyone, it's like it's like iso ball, you know? It's like iso. it's like Carmelo. it's like Give yeah, it's like yeah, giving the ball to Melo. Everyone, everyone just yeah. stand around. Let's just watch him. Hopefully he'll make he'll make this one. You know, it's it's not mm. sustainable basketball. You need to have mm. runners mm. and cutters and 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 fluidity and passing and switches and pick and rolls and uh, people cutting to the rim, kicking it out, dishing it out for open threes. That's what is sustainable basketball. But Madrid have quote unquote role players, not to call them role players uh, in a derogatory way whatsoever. But you you catch my drift, right? Yeah. He's, yeah. he's surrounded with very talented football players. We, you and I talked about that Real Sociedad game. Uh, mm -hmm. right. How great Rodrigo exactly. was. You know, we right. have good players who are not being used properly. And listen, people, some people are sick of me saying this, saying this. I'm really, really high on the players we have in Castilla right now. We have some really, really talented players there. Castilla right now are close to getting to Segunda. They're, I think, two points back of first place, Alcorcon. Alcorcon. A game I, I woke yeah. up at the crack of dawn yesterday to watch that that game against Alcorcon. They dominated. They, they were only able to get a draw. There's some really good players. We have wing-back issues right now. Obra, Rafael Obrador at the left-back slot is really, really good. Vinicius Tobias is really, if, if nothing else, he's, he's, a, he's an athletic, fast wing-back who tries to do things offensively. Sergio Arribas right now is is a really really promising. He's I mean he's only 21. He should not be playing in Castilla anymore, but he's an amazing player. We have a lot of good talent. Ancelotti doesn't think long term because he doesn't see his role long term. You know what I mean? Right. A player, a coach who needs results now. Yeah, guaranteed a coach, results. A coach like Carlo Ancelotti, as well-intentioned as he is, and I believe he's a really, really good man. I really don't think he's oh, yeah, thinking. Sure. I don't think he's thinking like, "Oh, I'm really, really interested in developing Sergio Arribas for for to have him ready in three years." He could be gone in two months. I don't think he cares. I really don't think he cares. Hmm. Maybe it's that's some of the benefit of having different someone different from the academy thought. who who thinks more long term, like Chavi, like Zidane. Maybe by the end of it, had less trust in the academy, but when he first came in, he had this trust in the young players, especially like Fede Valverde, who, who, you know, he was coaching at that time. Solari, even like rest in peace, his coaching career was like two weeks for Real Madrid. The first thing he did was bring in Regulon, who got in fights yeah. with Suarez and Messi. And it even though great. we were losing those classicals, we're like, yeah, fuck yeah, he's standing he up to, to Luis Suarez, you know? He was like a Gabi. He was like a Gabi. Yeah. He had that character. Mm. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's the one who really is ultimately credited with trusting Vinicius. Remember that uh, that hell week we had? That was uh, I was at that classical and then the Ajax game, mm -hmm. the one where we lost to Ajax for one, then right. we lost to uh, Barca. I think it was in the Copa del Rey when when the whole game was Vinicius getting past PK and missing chances, and then Barca won. Mm -hmm. I was at that right. game, and uh, that was that was during the Solari era. Where it's like he's here for a couple of weeks, and That's all of a sudden right. he just promoted like the entire Castilla team. That was fun. I'm not saying it was like yeah. I'm not. I'm not gonna give. I'm not gonna sit here he and say that. Very. I remember that. I remember that as well. He did very good. I mean, he was punching above his his weight. Uh, I remember I was doing Viva La Liga. Th those were the times where you would come on the the program. Yeah. When, it's fun. You know, we would. I remember, like you know, preparing stats and, and, and for the program and, and visuals and stuff. Where, yeah, so that, he was getting good numbers, man. He was, he was, he was doing good. Yeah, look, I'm not going to sit here and say that this is the scientific solution. Bring up 
pr- promote Castilla and every all of a sudden everything will be it's going to be a great era. Quinta de Buitre 2.0, the yeah yeah eras are back. It's going to be like Pep's Barca. That's not what I'm saying, but I'm just saying like clearly when your squad is decimated and things aren't working and players are old and Balde um Balde walking is 300% faster than Carvajal sprinting uh, like and we have really good Casilla players who are doing well and our lineups the, the, are predictable. The, the, the there are solutions that, we're not looking at, is my point. Right. Right. That don't seem like they are even being considered. But then the question is, you know, you bring up Quinta de Buitre quite often, but mm-hmm. again, historically, you, you put out a, a, a very interesting tweet or you retweeted something, uh, I think it was a, una grafica, like a, a graph or a stat that asked the question if La Fabrica is the best footballing school in the world or football program, the most successful, I think it was. I, I don't. You, you'll know better yeah, yeah. than me what it said, but it, it had 55 players, I believe, that pr- play in top clubs or top divisions, whether it's La Liga, the, the Premier League, Serie A, etc. Uh, I don't know if that is the most from any, a, anyone, from any other school. You know, I know Villarreal has a very good program. Obviously, La Masia I, is... Yeah, I think based on pure volume and the amount of clubs that have Castilla players, I think it's the most. It's the most, okay. But so my, my question is, how often are these players prized though? So, you know, you're looking through that list and you certainly see some recognizable names and players, although the Vinny and the Rodrigo one are a little bit forced in there. But okay, we'll let that one slide. But yeah. that, that aside, definitely very talented football players. But, you know, did they make their breakthrough? Did they Were they given the continuity with the first team? And the answer, more often than not, is is no. <clears throat> you're okay you are right to point that out and and that's a point i think that i've made often like you know just because you have players who can play for Getafe doesn't mean you have players who can who can play for Real Madrid right Borja Mayoral being an example for example um and these players like Butrogeno and uh, Martin Vasquez and Raul and Casillas they don't grow on trees Xavi Iniesta these guys don't grow on trees right they're they're generational for a reason, you know. You can't just have Messi like, oh, let's let's find the next Messi. These players, like, well, Messi, there will only be one Messi probably in our lifetime. I think the point is that though they don't need to be th- that caliber necessarily. And I also, at part of the the thing is Diego, we don't know until we we try it, right? Yeah, exactly. Think of what would have been. Gavi's fate if he came up during Xavi and Iniesta era. I don't think he would have known mm. his ex- about his existence, right? Even Xavi himself the, and, and Puyol were on the brink of transferring to another club because they didn't see a clear path uh, or future. I would argue, and maybe you can call me, I don't know what, what you think of this. My, I would actually argue that I don't think the greatness of Xavi would have actually been seen if Pep didn't go to Barca. Mm-hmm. I like the difference between Rijkaard Xavi and Pep's Xavi is night and day. It's a completely mm-hmm. different player. It's a it's a different level of greatness. So I so that that is I don't know if you agree with that or not, but. Well, I mean, look, you asked Xavi this question and he will, you know, sing praises to Fanjao, uh, Aragonés, Del Bosque, Pep, sure. Luis Enrique, Reichardt. Um, you know, he said he, he was fortunate enough to learn from the best and he learned from every single one. Uh, and when asked what was who was your most important coach, he will always say Luis Aragonés, as a matter of fact. So, sure. <laughs> um but well, there's no doubt. It's undeniable that we saw peak Xavi and, and peak Iniesta, obviously, with Pep. That's that's undeniable. Yeah, so anyway, so the point is uh, about timing, right? If if Gavi yeah. came up to the Xavi and Iniesta era, um, it's very likely we wouldn't. And, and, you know, conversely, what happens if Raul comes up during Benzema's era? What happens? I mean, we kind of saw what happened with Odegaard in terms of Odegaard. Now, that's partly his fault, too. But, I mean, he's one player that would have been extremely helpful, I think, 
um, for future squad building. But that, but that didn't work out. What ha- what would happen if Ashraf came up to the Carvajal era? Oh, we saw it. You know what would happen if Teo Hernandez, although he's not a Castilla player, but just you know what would happen if if Teo came up through when we had Marcelo? We kind of saw it. And so timing really matters. But it's crazy that some of these players that you're naming, like you mentioned Regilon, and I was like, man, in Regilon they're gonna have an insane fullback for years to come. This future, the kid, the, the, the future looks so bright for this kid. You know, the same with, um, who's Yama Llorente? Uh, Marcos. Marcos Llorente, thank you. Players that Madrid have let go that, had they stayed there, at least, you know, from the, the, the time, from what we saw from them uh, while they were playing for Real Madrid, would look very promising. Looked very promising. So, uh, but your yeah, point is they be... they weren't that good ultimately. No, I don't. I, I think no, no. Sorry, my criticism for all of these, uh, or, or or my criticism rather for all these players is more aimed at Real Madrid and perhaps their their philosophy or their lack there or their lack of commitment and confidence towards their own their own players, right? Their own. Um, yeah, homebred players. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, so that that yeah. all also that and also short term thinking, because mm-hmm. I, I think when they sold Ashraf, they were going through the pandemic, and they sold him. When I think he would have been really, really needed for obvious reasons. But I think the cost of losing him outweighs the money you got from him during the pandemic. So that's one of the short-term thinking, but there's another, there's another element of this, and that is fans will often say, well, you know, oh, it was the correct decision to sell Regulon, for example, which I, I'm not disputing. It's just a random example, Regulon, who now is at Atletico. He was doing okay at Tottenham until Conte came and, and didn't need him, and then now he's at Atletico. I think where you are matters in a lot of ways. It's very possible that Regulon would have been a better player if he was a Real Madrid player. And again, I, I'm not saying Real Madrid should have kept Regulon. It's just a random example. But I think where you are and what system you're playing in and also the club you're, you're playing for really matters in terms of how good you are. Yeah. I think Sergio Busquets is in, in some ways a good example of this. Mm-hmm. Would Busquets be have been one of the greatest defensive midfielders of all time had he not been playing at Barcelona? I think there's a there's a legitimate argument to be said no. But because context yeah. really matters and fit really matters, that we saw that Busquets. Yeah. But if Busquets was playing for, I don't know, random, Tottenham, poor Tottenham. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> Barca would have been necessarily, oh man, we should have we should have bought him. You know, he's not that good. Mm-hmm. Now, look, like he's not doing that great at Tottenham. Why would we? I, I just think these 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 nuanced conversations need to be had when we're talking about like yeah. how good someone is. Yeah. Fit really matters. Fit really matters. And and I'll say one more thing on this topic. And this was actually a few years ago where there was a discussion uh, between a panel on panel on the radio. This was late in the nights when I used to still listen to radio until like three a.m., two a.m. I love those shows. Um, a little bit what the Chiringuito was based on, but maybe with more intellectual people actually debating the topics as opposed to just shouting at each other. But they were discussing La Fabrica versus La Masia and sort of the general conclusion or, and, 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 or, and consensus, I think you could say, was that uh, both, you know, Cule and, and Madridista journalists agreed that probably La Fabrica is a better fit for most general football players and will give them most likely better opportunities to be prepared to make a leap to the professional stage as opposed to those that that succeed within La Masia and understand the style of football that is a lot more specific style of football with a specific philosophy, you know, Cruyffism, etc. will become sort of better, the better football players and maybe... You know, obviously at the time as well, you're you're talking about 
uh, uh, coming off of the back of, of Spain being hugely successful. It's the Chavi Iniesta era, the Busquets, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. But, but that was sort of the, the general consensus was like, you know, La Masia breeds a very specific type of football player that is not for all. You know, you, you have to fit a certain mold, the, the, the Pedris now, the Gavis, et cetera. Whereas like, but, you know, have the chance to be just incredible, uh, amazing uh, football players and, and, and how they interpret the game and how they execute it, their vision, etc. cetera. Um, but, you know, it might not be as successful as, as, as uh, and it's most likely not to be successful just anywhere else. Like um, you, the example you just put forward with Busquets and, and Tottenham, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, he would have a, a, a tougher time for sure. Yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> I I guess my over going back to the original point was that there are solutions you can look at to play mm. to, to come up with, and uh, I don't think they have been exhausted or looked at enough. Mm. <clears throat> so, dude, I yeah. I know we still have some pending topics. On however, I I have. Uh very hungry wife and kids and <laughs> that's more important taking more important <laughs> time is ticking I, the most here. pending topic is 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 your hungry wife and kids that's the most pending topic so uh attend keep to that. my family waiting for yeah. our family meal we do have a couple patron Patience. questions that we have to discuss but we can do that on the patron show um yeah and they're actually pretty loaded heavy topics too so we could save that so patreon.com slash churros y tacticas uh, if you want to get access to the weekly bonus show where it gets really raw and dirty and placid, if you want to get access to that one, <laughs> patreon.com slash churros y tacticas. Thanks, Diego. It's good chatting, man. Thanks, buddy. Congrats on La Liga. Always. We'll talk later this week. Thank you. Peace. All right. Peace.